So we have some breaking news. A new 2020 Democratic presidential primary poll by Emerson, a national poll, shows a two-horse race, Joe Biden versus Bernie Sanders. No one else is even close to either of those two candidates. Biden's in first place at 32. Bernie, not too far back, 25 points in second place. But Elizabeth Warren doesn't even have half the support Bernie Sanders does. She's only at 12. Pete Buttigieg doesn't even crack 10 points. He's only at eight, just barely ahead of Andrew Yang at six, Gabbard at four, and Bloomberg at three. What happened to Elizabeth Warren, a lot of people are asking. Well, this poll notes that she's struggling at capturing a key demographic for her own. Biden does the best amongst older people, Sanders the best amongst younger people. Warren isn't failing with either of those groups, but she's not specifically succeeding with them either, so she's losing some of that support to the two main frontrunners. But I think the biggest factor is her lack of progressive consistency. Look, if you want a progressive, Bernie Sanders is that guy. He's always been that guy, and he'll always be that guy. And whether I like him or not, if you want somebody who's basically a Democratic conservative, then you have Joe Biden. He's always been that. He is that right now. And he'll likely always be that. If you want somebody who's been consistent on Medicare for all, you got Bernie and you really only have Bernie. And if you want somebody who's very, very consistent about, you know, defending and expanding the Obamacare legacy, aka taking a position against Medicare for all, well, then you have Joe Biden and you've sort of always had Joe Biden. But Elizabeth Warren, again, is caught in the middle. Elizabeth Warren, when she was pulling at her best in this contest, when it looked like she was going to eclipse Bernie and become the second place candidate and some polls even beating Joe Biden for first, she was championing clearly and consistently Medicare for all. She started to tank when she started to waffle on Medicare for all. That's the simplest answer. It's not the only factor, of course, but it's the main one. She said she was for it. Then she said she wanted a phase-in. Then she talked about choice. And then she brought back the phase-in. And the point is, you can say whether or not Elizabeth Warren supports Medicare for all, and we can have that debate. But there's no debate about whether Biden does, he doesn't, or whether Bernie does. He does. That's the fact that matters here. Elizabeth Warren isn't capturing people on the key question at hand, and she's hurting because of it. This also shows Pete Buttigieg's real failure to capture any support that isn't explicitly white support. Joe Biden does extremely well amongst African Americans. Bernie Sanders does very well amongst Hispanics. Both of them do decently with minorities overall, and that's one of the reasons they're finding success. Pete Buttigieg in particular fails with those groups, and it's one of the reasons that he's well back and forth, and it's one of the reasons why, despite all the money he's raising and all the media attention he's getting, that he's not able to crack even 10 points. It's really, really troubling if I'm a Pete Buttigieg supporter or campaigner or staff person or volunteer, that despite the consistent media push he's gotten, he can't even crack, you know, the margin of error versus candidates like Gabbard and Yang, who, whether you like them or not, don't get nearly the media coverage that Buttigieg himself gets. And so we're at a really interesting point in the race. The voting, the caucuses, the primaries, they're just about to begin. And we have to remember that delegate allocation is not winner take all. It's proportional, but only if you break 15. And if you don't break 15, you won't get delegates on any consistent basis. And if this is to be believed, only Bernie and Biden are safe enough above the 15% threshold to actually get those delegates with any sort of consistency. In fact, people like Warren and Buttigieg might go in many states without getting a single delegate. So right now, those people have to be asking themselves, is it time to switch my support? Is it time to move to another candidate who will have a shot at winning this to implement some of the policies I want to see, some of the vision I want to see, even though it's not everything I want to see. Elizabeth Warren supporters, if they support many of the progressive policies that Bernie Sanders does, if they support that general process by which both Warren and Sanders have been working 
to bring progressive values into the American mainstream political and social and economic discourse, then maybe they want to move to Bernie Sanders. Because right now, maybe Elizabeth Warren isn't clear in her support for Medicare for All. But Bernie Sanders is the only one that even wants to get us there in some way, even if it's not the same way Elizabeth Warren does. And Bernie Sanders backs Warren on things like the wealth tax and on many, many, many other policies meant to challenge inequality and hold the rich and powerful to account for what they do to society and how they operate. Only Bernie Sanders will capture that vision for Elizabeth Warren. So this is a key make it or break it moment. This is now a two horse race from my perspective. Some other polls might come out and show that Warren and Sanders are a little bit closer or that it's a three way race between Bernie, Biden and Warren or that Pete Buttigieg has some early state momentum that might allow him to grow a little bit more. But to me, it's over for everybody but Bernie and Biden. That's what it's all about. What you want now has to be based on how those two candidates can deliver it. And for every progressive in this contest, for every progressive supporter of a progressive candidate, for the Yang supporters and the Gabbard supporters, I don't agree with you guys on everything. I don't always think that your guys, that your person's policies match what my vision for a progressive world is. But at the end of the day, if you want to back progressive policies that challenge the establishment, Bernie Sanders needs your support. Gabbard and Yang will live to fight another day, but support for Gabbard and Yang at this stage only helps someone like Joe Biden win. If that support shifts to Bernie Sanders, it'll give him key delegates in key states. Right now, those votes for Yang and those votes for Gabbard won't give them a single delegate because they won't crack 15 consistently. And even Warren supporters, I have great respect for you guys, but if you want to see a progressive in the White House this time, I don't think it's going to be Liz. I don't think it's going to be her. It's got to be Bernie. And so you have to ask yourselves, giving Elizabeth Warren 13%, 12%, 11%, 14% in state after state after state will mean zero delegates. And it will mean Joe Biden likely becomes the nominee. And if we're lucky, we get a crappy neoliberal Joe Biden presidency. But I think a Joe Biden nomination equals a Trump reelection, frankly. So we have to ask ourselves, how do we elect a progressive nominee who will beat Trump and will usher in a better America? And all of those people's supporters, I think now's the time. You got to make the move. It's got to be to Bernie. It's got to be quick. It has to be decisive and it has to be done now so that Bernie has momentum through those early states. I don't know if Bernie Sanders can beat Joe Biden in South Carolina, but if Bernie can beat Biden in New Hampshire, in Iowa, and in Nevada, this could really flip the race and give him the momentum he needs to stop Joe Biden from becoming the nominee.